Well, welcome everyone. I invite you to look around the room or the space that you're in and allow yourself to land here. If you're at home, you know, look around at some of the things that you like. There might be a mess there that you don't want to deal with. That's fine too. But see if you can allow your gaze to land upon a thing or two that feels good. And if you're in this space, take a glance at each other. Some strangers, some people you're starting to get to know. And Talia, can I trouble you to move over a seat just so I can see you? That would be a nice gift for me. Thank you very much. And in the space, I invite you to, to take it in. I, I occasionally mention how much I like this space here, but particularly this blue on the walls and these little framed things I keep thinking I might talk with Tig about. They're behind Talia and Riza or the little lights, this little fairy light. When we consciously, intentionally stop and look around, looking above us, behind us, below us, even at the space that we're in, and we consciously look for the things that feel okay or feel even feel good, but okay is good enough. Right? Not sucking is good enough. <laughs> Amazing things happen to our nervous system. So look around, like for real, look around. Notice what you like and then popcorn it out. In Zoom, you can play along, right? We don't need to see the thing that you're liking, but popcorn it out. What do you see that you like or that doesn't suck, you know? I'll say for me again, this blue wall, I love this blue. But some other voices, what do you see that you like or that doesn't suck? Thank you, my sunflower. This is a plum village flower reminding us to breathe. Yeah. Do you notice anything in your body as you feel it or see it or name the liking of it, whether it's the art or the sunflower? Hello, right? <laughs> like this little release of tension just because you took a moment to notice something that doesn't suck. It's crazy cool. So powerful. It's such a little thing, but of course we forget most of the time. It's okay. It's a practice. Like one of the ways that sati that mostly translates as mindfulness. One of the ways that can be translated is to remember. So, so much was just the practice of remembering. What else? Anyone else? What do you see? Anybody on Zoom want to play along? Anything you see that you want to name? No, no pressure. Just the opportunity. I just was I able just to see what was the prompt. Is there anything that you see in your space, in your environment, or on through the camera, whatever? that feels good or that you like, or that doesn't suck. Like we're not trying to set the bar too high. Mm. I like the way that I've decorated my room, my, my personal space. Exactly, right? And so there's a double layer in there so that you can enjoy it. And then perhaps there's even some appreciation of the action that you took, right? So we can appreciate ourselves for taking the time to create an environment that feels good to us, beautiful. Thank you. And then letting yourself feel that in the body, this added layer of, oh yeah, and that feels good in the body to see that, to name that. Thank you. Yeah. I really like the purple tunnel of your down jacket by flying in front of you. And then... There's a very red jacket back there. It's like, I think it's great. Yeah, thank you. And then feeling it in the body, right? The liking. And maybe, just maybe, those of us who are not the person who just spoke, 
maybe we can feel some joy because of his joy. Like maybe we don't, we don't care. We can't see it. We don't like the red and the purple, like whatever, but someone else did. And we can appreciate their appreciation. And it's really cool. That's a practice called mudita, taking joy in another's joy, altruistic joy or sympathetic joy. Maybe a couple more if they're, if they're here. Like, uh, also, the, uh, I don't know, like there's a bunch of different rectangular shapes and shadows and stuff that are just like kind of interesting. Right. Right. You get this shot down the hall, you get to see further, certainly further than I can see, further than many of us can see. Right. And so notice as he offers that joy, what happens for you? And I'll say that for me, my first response was not mudita at all. But my first response was grasping. I want to see it. What's he seeing? I want to see it. What's he seeing? Really? <laughs> That's the conditioning. Oh, I'm missing out, right? Sometimes we talk about this FOMO or this fear of missing out. Like you can't experience everything. <laughs> I think that that fear of missing out is one of the things that causes me the most suffering in life because I try to do everything. Oh, and that, a little bit of that, and I want to touch it. And then what happens? I'm exhausted. I'm overbooked. I'm double booked. I'm disappointing myself. I'm disappointing someone else. Like, yeah, I can't do everything. I'm not going to get up and go look down that hallway right now. But maybe later I'll remember, or maybe not. But as I, honor that and acknowledge that and recognize the name and out loud to all of you that habit there's already some spaciousness and some freedom and now i can feel joy that you enjoyed that and are enjoying that and that you shared it with us right i can feel it in my body once i acknowledge that there's this other thing that's there first right if i like try to pretend that i'm not a greed type and i'm like ooh, i want it you know like i try to pretend that's not there and i'm just stuck in it it's like gnawing at me i feel I feel shitty. I feel like I'm missing out, like I'm being punished, like I did something wrong. Like there's this ridiculous layering of stuff that's there that's not warranted, but it's there for whatever conditioning. And when I recognize it and I name it, it's like, oh, okay. And then I feel happy. It's really different. Yeah. Maybe one more if there's, if that's here. And if not, that's cool. Many doors that are there. Yeah. He. <laughs> Thank you for naming that. Yeah. And who knows what's happening online, right? Maybe you've been in the space and you know that to which she refers, or you have no idea, like what, or you feel like that greed that I just experienced, right? So whatever is there, you know, grieving it. Reading it, and I feel a delight and a joy in that. Like, ooh, what's there? That that tenderness and that curiosity. Yeah, yeah. So allowing the eyes to close, if that feels comfortable for you, or if you're supported in your meditation practice by allowing your gaze to land softly on a candle or a flower or a blank wall or the floor in front of you, really whatever is working for you right now. Always changing, always changing, always changing. And finding a posture that feels supportive. Maybe it's lying down or standing. Listen into your heart and your gut. Ask in and listen. Maybe it's seated just as you are. Or maybe there's small, some small or large adjustment. Beginning by asking in, by hearing your heart and your gut and finding your posture. Mm -hmm. And noticing how it feels in the body to have taken in the environment that you're in to the extent that you did that and to notice what's pleasant 
or perhaps appreciate the noticing of others. And as I say that, a cascade of things that you all said begin to arise in the mind like waterfall. And I feel joy. As I appreciate the appreciation of the puddle of my purple coat and the puff of the red coat to my left. and delight and childlike joy and curiosity as I reflect on those little gray doors up by the ceiling. Ooh, why, what, who, how? Not that I need the answers at all, but I feel delight in the childlike joy and curiosity. And this marine blue and the small arts and the little sunflower and any environment that you might be in that you might have contributed to making the way that suits you. I feel a smile arising on my face. And I feel joy in my body just kind of expansive. There's a wholesome kind of inflating that's occurring in my heart and my chest. Not an egoic inflation, but an expansive spacious being with, that I find comes with allowing delights allowing joy, allowing appreciation to emerge. Not forcing it in any way, but allowing for the opportunity to present itself. Together as a Sangha, allowing ourselves individually to appreciate. Perhaps you can appreciate yourself for being here, for being here with the Sangha in this moment, or for listening to watching this recording later. You can appreciate yourself for showing up, for taking the time, for investing the time in your practice of cultivating presence. Is there anything else that you can allow yourself to appreciate as you rest here, just noting to yourself silently, taking your time. Perhaps appreciating your ability to hear gratitude 
for whatever level of hearing you have. All of the various sounds arising and passing in our environments. And we welcome and embrace them all. Noticing how that appreciation or absence of appreciation, whatever might actually be arising for you. Noticing how that feels in the body. And appreciating this body with all of its imperfections, all of its aches and pains. Here it is, still alive and kicking. Thank you, body. And tuning in to the heart, to the gut. Noticing how it feels to appreciate or have an absence of appreciation for this body, just as it is. Freedom from needing it to be different than it is. Appreciation for that which doesn't suck. Appreciation for the good enough. Appreciation to be alive.
not intended to be perfect. Not how it works. And we can cultivate our ability to accept to appreciate, to enjoy. We can cultivate our ability to embrace and be with ourselves in the present moment, moment by moment. And we can incline the quality of the heart-mind in the direction of our choosing. Noticing how it feels in the heart, in the body to allow yourself to appreciate maybe you did something fun in the sun yesterday or had some pleasant or nourishing experience today or something else from last week or last month Allowing yourself the gift of recalling, remembering, and being with these pleasant experiences. However fleeting they might be, however spare or scant they may be. Recognizing them when they arise and recalling them, remembering them. If nothing's coming to mind, appreciating yourself for being here, listening, practicing, that's enough. And if something is coming to mind, allowing yourself to be with it. And if a thousand things are coming to mind, pick one at a time and allow one thing, this gift of just being here now or whatever, to be fully experienced, allowing it to be vivid, full technicolor, seeing it, smelling it, tasting it, touching it. Being in the experience and feeling it in your body. Once it's fully alive, you can let the story go and just feel the experience in the body of contentment, of peace. And if it's not arising, practicing being gentle with yourself. It's okay, you've never done this before. Or you've done it a thousand times and it's hard. It's all good. It's all okay. This moment is not supposed to be any different than it is. Whether it sucks or is wonderful. It's just like that right now. It's going to change. It's going to change. And allow yourself to feel the pleasance. Not straining or striving, not chasing after, but resting in. The sunflower, the blue wall, the art, the rectangles down the hall, the purple, the red, the room. Some appreciation 
that is yours or was shared by another that feels good to you. The little gray doors by the ceiling, like anything. Doesn't matter. Allowing something to emerge that feels pleasant. And allowing yourself the gift of really feeling it in the heart, in the gut, in the legs, in the body. And then, of course, something else shows up in the mind. It's only natural. And we practice to incline the mind towards something pleasant. As a practice, as an exploration. And when it presents itself, noticing how pleasant feels in the body. And allowing that to become your object of awareness, that which you are resting attention into. Resting in to the felt experience of pleasance in the body. And when that is no longer available, calling it up again, allowing the magnificence of the mind to recall something that doesn't suck. And allow yourself to feel appreciation of that for that.
you might sometimes notice the mind doing something completely different. When we notice that, we can simply practice letting go, letting go, letting go, and calling up into the mind something pleasant or feeling the experience of something pleasant in the moment, sounds, or the sensation of breath, or this body resting here, if one of those experiences is in fact pleasant or good enough so that you can feel appreciation in the body. And when you're ready, letting go of the story, just feeling the body as it rests in appreciation. As it rests in love, as it rests in acceptance, or perhaps a different word is emerging for you, that's fine. These words just point to our direct experience. They cannot they cannot encapsulate it. They try. It's what we have. Resting into the body. Being with yourself as you are. And consciously cultivating wholesome mind states, wholesome heart states, nourishment and healing. Be with. Being with this body. Letting go of that which does not serve us. 
and recalling that which nourishes us. I'm resting into the body. Coming home to yourself. Nourishing yourself. Allowing yourself the gift of experiencing pleasant perhaps through means of recalling pleasant experience. Feeling how it feels in the body. Allowing yourself to recall a pleasant experience. It might be as simple as resting in bed or resting here now. And allowing yourself to feel the pleasantness of that. Or if it's not feeling pleasant, allowing that to be okay.
greeting yourself as you are. It's okay. I'm here with you, we might say to ourselves. I am here with you. I've got you. And if there's any bit of love or care or okayness in the body, resting into that. And if there's nothing there, cultivating it or just resting. Enjoying just a few minutes longer together in this practice of resting into ourselves in a conscious, kind way. Inclining the mind, inclining the heart, toward love. Favoring these last two minutes. Tuning in to acceptance or love, or appreciation, whatever's most available to you in the moment. I'm feeling it in your body to the best of her ability right now.
giving yourself the gift of presence. And with whatever level of presence, allowing and awareness is inside of you, bringing that into movement, expanding it so that you might listen into the body and allow the body to move in whatever ways feel good for your heart, your gut, in this moment. It may start, start out small and get bigger. Fingers, toes, hip, hips, whole body. You might find that you're supported by changing your posture completely. been still for this half hour I find twists are often super supportive and helpful and when I've been sitting cross-legged I really like to fold forward that might be nice for many seated posture but Find in your path, your way, what works for you. And as you're ready, taking in light and sight and looking around the space that you're in and noticing anything you appreciate. Maybe it's similar, maybe it's shifted. Greeting yourself, greeting the moment as much as is available. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your practice. Welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective and specifically SF Sangha or Spiritual Friends Sangha and our Monday Mindful Offerings, Mindful Mondays. My name is Augusta Hopkins, she, her. And I've recently been enjoying this practice of recalling something pleasant. There's so much fucking shit, right? It's just so easy to be overwhelmed by all the crap. But there are some pleasant things too. And if I allow myself to consciously call them up into my heart, into my mind, and then sit with it, or my formal practice is lying down, to lie down and feel it in my body, I'm noticing some, some really serious alchemical shifts happening, some big neurological changes, and greater and greater capacity to be with things that aren't the way I would wish for them to be. I love my partner. He's an amazing human being. And sometimes he does stuff I don't really like because he's a human being. And since I've been practicing in this way, I'm not losing it about it. I'm not even having to take care of myself around it. I'm not getting activated. It's amazing. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. I've been at this shit for so long, I can't even tell you. And there's some freedom that's occurring at this moment. And I know that it isn't just because of this practice, but this is a key piece of my practice today. And it rests on the shoulders of more than 15 years of solid practice already. It's not just like, I just started doing this one thing and now everything's peachy keen. Like, I don't think it works that way. But we do get moments of freedom when we cultivate freedom. 
right? Like, yeah, you call the baby pissed off, you're pissed off more often, right? So you're inclining the mind in some direction all the time. How are we inclining the mind? What are we doing? What are we actively doing? What is the consciousness around it? Or are we just kind of in this habitual, oh my God, capitalist, you need something more. You need more money. You need a hotter wife. You need this and new. Like, you know, like this, are we just sucked into that? Or do we notice that we're getting sucked into that? I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What doesn't suck? As I have spoken of many times, Thich Nhat Hanh is one of my teachers. And he offers a teaching on the non-toothache. And his teaching on the non-toothache is like, if you've ever had a toothache, and I feel like in this day and age, it's like, have you ever had a stomach ache? <laughs> you know, have you ever had a cold? All you want is to be able to breathe again, for your belly to be okay, for your digestion to be working. And if you've had a toothache, you, know, you want for the toothache to stop. And then it stops and you can breathe out of your nostrils again. Your belly's okay. The tooth doesn't hurt anymore. You appreciate it for what? A millisecond? <laughs> ah. And for many of us right now in this moment, we do not have a toothache. So we can appreciate the non-toothache. It's amazing. And I'm not pretending that I live my life like that. I'm not like always in the appreciation of what doesn't suck, but whew, when I am, it's easier. It's easier. And as I just articulated, I notice my capacity to be with that, which is not as I would wish it to be, increases because there's this resilience that's been being built inside of me when I take in what I like. Simple as these frames or this pile of colors or the rectangles down the hall or on the wall or whatever like it doesn't have to be some like crazy amazing wonderful thing you don't have to see the northern lights to appreciate moments in life mm. and it's not a suggestion to bypass right it's like what else is going on yeah, that person was an asshole. I'm not going to hang out with them anymore. <laughs> right? We have boundaries. And wow, the floor looks really shiny. <laughs> you know, these simple things that allow our nervous systems to be okay, to navigate life. So often we think, well, I'll be okay if. If they just do something differently or I just accomplish this. Then I'll be okay. But, you know, with that lack of appreciation of the non-toothache, once we get that thing, we appreciate it for about half a second. And when we're wanting someone else to do something so that we feel better, that we're never satisfied. <laughs> never. Never. And we're tortured by trying to control that which, which, that which is outside of our control. We're tortured by trying to control that which is outside of our control. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Because it's what we do. Right. So maybe we don't have to make that a problem, but we can recognize this and use this great ability to incline the mind for something that doesn't suck, for something that's been pleasant. And then take this extra step to notice how does that feel in the body? How does it feel in the body to have a pleasant experience? To notice you're having a pleasant experience. It's this extra layer and so just right now i don't know what's happened i look forward to hearing about it over the next several minutes but just right now can you touch something pleasant something that doesn't suck and it doesn't suck is good enough you don't need a high bar 
And can you feel how it feels in the body to allow yourself to have that experience, to acknowledge that experience? So there's three layers. It might start by acknowledging it because then you know that you're having it and then to appreciate how it feels in the body. Maybe there are four layers, whatever. Forget about the details of it, but something pleasant, know you're having it and feel it in the body. Yeah. And before I ask you all to share, because I want to hear from everyone who's willing to share, I want to name that two days ago, we had an outing as part of the Dharma Collective, specifically of Spiritual Friends Sangha. I led an uh, embodied bicycling or biking meditation gathering. And the experience for me, was amazing and wonderful. I enjoyed it so much. And two months ago, I led this gathering. I've just started doing it recently. I've been cycling forever and practicing mindfulness and meditation for a long time. And this is the first time I offered the two together as a, a day long, as a teaching, as a practice. Or two months ago was the first time. I hated it. My game life sucks so bad for me. <laughs> but I really didn't enjoy it. And I had the intention to do this every month this year. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try again. But like I skipped, I skipped a month ago. I think part of why I didn't like this because it was kind of cold and I was uncomfortable. But I, I didn't enjoy it. And so I'm glad, so glad I like I got back up on that proverbial horse and I tried it again and I loved it. And I'm sure the fact that I was enjoying it, or I hope. The fact that I was enjoying it was transmitted to the people who were there with me. And toward the end, I tried to point to this particular practice of noticing that you're having a pleasant experience and feeling it in the body. Because we have them all the time. Mostly we miss them. Because we don't care. Because we're trying to survive the shit show. Our evolutionary journey is what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong got to find what's wrong to survive right to survive and it served us really well and lots of fucked up shit it served us it served our ancestors really fucking well and today we spend some time thank fucking god when we don't have to be doing that when we can rest into what's okay, we can find what's okay or even pleasant and start to create a new neural pathway, start to create a greater capacity to notice what doesn't suck. To notice what doesn't suck. And just for a little neuroscience, for those of you who are nourished by that detail of thing, Rick Hansen, neuropsychologist here in the Bay Area in Marin, Old straight white guy, forgive him for that. He says that the mind, the mind is like Teflon. You know that toxic stuff that everything slips off of? Toxic, mind you. The mind is like Teflon for pleasant experiences. Because it doesn't matter. Just Whoosh is right off. It's more slippery than ice. And like Velcro, you know that sticky Velcro on your bag or your shoes? I don't think I have anything near me right now. That all the fibers and hairs get stuck in. Right? Everything gets attached to it. The mind is like Velcro for unpleasant experience. Because that's what kept our ancestors alive. Our human ancestors, our primate ancestors, our lizard ancestors. You know, this lizard brain, it's still here. It's not a vestigial thing that's got, we've lost. That fight, flight, freeze, appease. It's still here, fawn. 
And we can balance it by taking in the good, by noticing, by allowing this nervous system to recognize, oh, pleasant experience. And guess what? I'm safe enough in this moment to receive it, to receive it. Thank you.